Hi, YouTube family. Uh, I promised you guys the unboxing of the Texan SS in 308. Now, I also wanted to tell you guys why I chose the Texan over the FX Dreamline, which was also going to be in 308. So, FX, it was so that you had to send your gun back to uh, the manufacturer, which is overseas, in order to get it repaired. Now, they're starting to get a few facilities over here that do repair. The other thing was, and I don't know if it's been released yet, but the FX Dreamline in 308, when I wanted the classic. So, and in 308, it hadn't been released, or 30 cal 308, whichever you wanna say. Uh, it hadn't been released yet and they didn't have a release date. Now, it was a little bit cheaper, but this gun, the Air Force Texan SS uh, in 308, has a lifetime warranty to the original purchase, purchaser. So, that was another thing. Um, which leaves me kind of left in an area where I said this was going to be my last gun. Uh, it's most definitely going to be my most expensive gun. Uh, I'm not buying another gun that it, it cost over $1,000. And I know you never say never, but I don't ever plan on it. And the reason being is the guns I have now, which is if you're new to the channel, I have a Gamo uh, Hunter Sport in 177. That's a brake barrel. All my other guns are PCP. Uh, they are the Hatson Bull Boss in 25, the Umarex Gauntlet in 22, the Benjamin Bulldog in 357, uh, and now this Air Force Texan SS in 308, uh, Seneca in 45, and a Sam Yang in so the Seneca is a uh, 909 45 which is the same thing as the Sam Yang is Irvin Cherry anyway um, and the the uh, 50 cal Sam Yang is a dragon claw so to be honest man except the Springer I'm not really good with the Springer yet and I just got pellets that I'm going to be showing you for the hats and bull balls uh, that actually make it really group well. But the Umarex Gauntlet is amazing. I mean, that sucker is, man, from 10 to right now, I've shot it out to maybe 68, 70 yards. Uh, that sucker's dead on. It's probably the best shooting gun I have. But my Benjamin Bulldog, I see a lot of people shooting that gun. And I mean, they get decent groups. But I'm gonna have to show you guys just how good of groups I get with that gun. That gun is amazing too. So, all the next videos are going to be me adding accessories. And that can get expensive too, as you guys know. Now, why am I doing the unboxing of this Texan when everybody has seen the Texans? Well, one, you don't see that many 30 cal Texans uh, in well, you don't hardly see any videos on the SL and uh, on the SS, but I have seen a couple of unboxing videos, and I man, I'm just nosy. Uh, I see them take three things out of the box, and maybe three things is the only thing in the box. But I see them take three things out of the box, and I'm wondering what else is in the box. Is there anything? And they just push the box to the side. The other thing is. Um, this gun is actually not put together, and you you have to put the the bottle in, which is also your your uh, butt pad, butt stop, whatever. You have to put it in, and they talk about a barrel nut. Man, I've never seen that. Um, so we're gonna learn together. You're gonna get to see everything that's in the box. And I might pause the video a little bit so I can read so you guys don't have to sit through there because I have never owned a Texan. 
I have owned other guns that I don't have now, but I've never owned a Texan. Uh, so with that being said, let's get started with this unboxing. Um, you will see it as I see it. Oh, another reason I never owned a Texan. On my which gun should I buy video, I tell you uh, there's a lot more to it than somebody suggesting the best gun for you. Looks happens to be one of those things. Caliber, how you're going to shoot it, where you're going to shoot it. Well, until Texan came out with this model, the SS, I didn't like, I don't like how long the Texans are. And this gun might be a little bit too long for me now that I did a little bit more research on it. But uh, I don't I don't like that little skinny piece of the barrel sticking out. I like the shroud over it. So it's a it was a looks thing as far as this goes. Uh, I loved all the stories about the power, but the looks were, were stopping me. And man, maybe that's petty, but like I say, get what appeals to you what makes you happy. So I don't care what anybody else thinks the other Texans look like. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm saying it's not the gun for me, but this Texan happened to be, okay? All right, so let's take a look at it. And again, I'm trying with the tripod now. Um, so, Trying to make the, the videos better for you guys. All right. So you get a warning. This air gun is recommended for adult use only. Careless use may result in serious injury or death. Dangerous in excess of one mile. Capable of velocity, velocity in excess of 1,000 feet per second. Read all instructions before using. This air gun should only be used by persons 18 years of age or older. Lead ammunition only. Compressed air or dry nitrogen only. So your warranty card. Um, I guess the manual. So let's, let's just open this and see. Alright, it says Spinlock wrench, Spinlock Allen key, main, uh, the warranty card, and I do believe, yeah, the manual. Okay, so opening it, there's the bottom, another warning, and you can see the, well, let me move it up, you can see the gun, and I've had it a few days, but I said we were going to see it together, and that's what I meant. We were going to see it together. All right. Uh, the bottle has some kind of little, I don't know, texture on it. And, man, it feels good. It feels like a, a foam-type texture. Uh, this is your adjustable butt pad the bottle is empty so let's see I don't know if you guys can really see that that good but there you go it is empty
All right. You guys are going to see it every step of the way with me. Okay. I mean, it's, it's packaged pretty nice. It is packaged pretty nice. Now, actually, as far as I'm concerned, this would be about as long as I'd really want a gun. <laughs> and it doesn't have the bottle on it, but I think it's gonna be okay after I add it to it. So, uh, and again, I'm doing this kind of blind, uh, but it's Air Force. Um, Model R1401, made in the USA. Now that's kind of misleading because we know that the barrels aren't made in the USA, they're made in Germany. Shows you safe and fire. Uh, the patent numbers, I don't know what this number really is. I'm trying to see if it shows you the caliber on it. And I don't really see that. I mean, I could tell it's a 308. Or with the smaller big board just by the tray and just because I own other big boards and I know what size the pellets are, the bullets that you use. Um, yeah, I don't see that on there. Now this is, I guess, one of the newer models because the old ones, as you remember, this was all even. And now these are where you can add accessories. So you can add your laser, your flashlight, uh, your, your uh, bipod. But let's set this aside. And now, the question I've always wondered, what's up under here? Is there anything? And guess what? There is not. There's not anything left. Okay? Not anything left. So, what we're going to do is I'm just going to put this back. Grab the instructions. Go ahead and get the gun put together. I'm not tossing the box because I'm going to keep the box. And I'll tell you what, it's got a little weight to it. Now again, for you people that are new to the channel, um, I know you're looking at that Diana back there and you're probably wondering, well, is he gonna unbox that? Why is it just sitting there? That's a birthday present to my baby boy who is, uh, he's gonna be 10 years old. And yes, we're gonna do an unboxing, but I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna video him un unboxing that gun. Uh, very nice gun, but it's gonna be his first PCP. Um, before I even get started. Just because that tells me what this is, and I'm now gonna go back and start labeling everything because you remember right now but this stuff you don't use so much you forget what gun it goes to and all of that so i'm going to start getting more of these envelopes and labeling stuff and 
I'll probably make a video too on some of the stuff that you collect to use while you're air gunning. You know, to clean it, to work on it. Uh, like these have a special wrenches. Uh, the Umarex has a special wrench for uh, letting the air out of it. So there's some things that are specific to some guns and you guys will want to know about those. All right, this is the regular Allen key and I'm assuming this, this is for the special barrel nut, okay? Let's take the instructions. Three important rules. Now, I haven't read all of that, but three important rules. Always point the muzzle in a direction that will not cause injury or property damage if the gun discharges. Keep your finger off the trigger, trigger until you are ready to shoot. And that is just a general, both of those are just a general gun rule. Whether it's a powder burner, whether it's a BB gun, even if it's one of the little Daisy uh, Rough Riders, you know, just lever cock that's a good rule because even a bb gun can hurt you okay well you can put an eye out in case you're wondering so don't load the gun until you're ready to you're ready to shoot all right tells you about charging and specifications and all of that i thought it would have showed you how to put it together first Read this entire manual and read this manual entirely before charging or using your air gun. All right, so now it's showing you how to attach the bottom. It says slide the air tank into the rear of the frame. Uh, spin, <coughs> screw the spin lock sleeve onto the air tank until it's hand tight. Make sure that the set screw is loose and allows the spin lock sleeve to turn freely. And it shows you how to do all of this. I mean, it's got a pretty good diagram. Use the spin lock wrench to tighten the air tank in place. Use care so you will not scratch your aluminum frame. Good idea because you know how we love our guns and we hate scratches, dents, dings, whatever. Uh, to, refill, to refill your spin lock, uh, your spin lock tank attached to 3000 PSI rated disconnect, which is normal. Um, and this you can do whether it's connected or not connected. And there's your quick disconnect right there. So your foster fitting. All right. Now that part I'm not gonna do today. I'm just gonna put it together. All right, and then the only thing it shows you is uh, loading, cocking, and firing. So I will put it together. I'm gonna pause it while I put it together. This part we have seen people do is put it together. Um, but just in case anybody's wondering, I am going to open it up. This would have been loose. Let's see. Okay. I guess we're going to do this together too.
And this is one of the things that I wondered because I've never seen anybody do this. Pause this for a second while I see if I can find what I'm not doing right. Or if I've got to. Well, I'm going to pause it for a minute. And as soon as I find out what I'm not doing right, I'll get back on here and show you guys. Okay, I am back. I have found out what I was doing. So my spin lock uh, screw, and then I'm going to take this out. So that spin lock sleeve thing is right here. Let me get back here so I can try to show you better. So. Try to get it up here. All right. Yeah. All right. So there it is. Mine was on uh, kind of snug, so I couldn't spin it with my hand. So I loosened it up, turning it counterclockwise. So now we're going to go back and put the bottle in and try again. even so you can spin this now you can see it start to pull up so I'm actually gonna remove that totally you can see it start to snug up so it's starting to pull the bottle I'll keep spinning it here Snug. So now I just want to make sure that the butt pad is straight. And I am going to take my wrench now and tighten it up. Oh. 
So now it's tight. So now we're gonna take this nut or the Allen screw right here and we're gonna tighten it down and make sure that it doesn't move. So anyway guys, it's not quite as easy to do as it looks like when you're watching the video. So it's a good reason for showing you guys. And this Allen wrench <laughs> does not fit. So I'm gonna pause you guys for a minute. I'm gonna go get some more Allen wrenches. I'll tighten this down and then we'll just take a quick look at the whole put together gun, okay? All right, so just a second. All right, we back at it, everybody. So, this is the Allen wrench that they sent. This is the Allen wrench that it requires. I want you guys to see big difference. Big difference. And uh, in case you're wondering, no, I'm not upset. When you get into air guns, you're gonna have more Allen wrenches than you can imagine. Scopes, um, different things that goes on the guns. So, all right, so that's snug. So I'm actually because I have extras. I'm going to put this Allen key in here with this. And I'm going to put the original because there may be something that, like the butt stop plates here, that um, I need this key for. So this will be for my Texan, and I'll, I'll put on here this the 308. Now, Everything else feels good and snug. And uh, she, uh, she feels good, but I'll tell you what, from looking at the pictures, I thought it was gonna be a lot thinner than it is. I'm looking at this rail for the first time in person, and I'm wondering if my scope mounts are actually gonna work with this or if I'm gonna have to buy uh, some different scope mounts because this is actually uh, pretty thin. I think this is a weaver rail, so. Uh, but now this is about as big as it looks, but I, I kind of thought that the gun was more in line with this. Uh, this is awful narrow. This could, this little pad right here could be uh, thicker. So, and what I just did there was decocking the gun. So, if you cock one to decock it, you pull it up, pull it down, squeeze the trigger, and go ahead. So, that's how you decock it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> something I talked about earlier was I was talking about all the stuff that you accumulate when you're starting to do it. So I started out with a itty bitty toolbox. Man, probably one third the size of this one. Right here. And now I have added that one and this one. Now this one right here, of the way that I have set up I don't have a uh, shelving yet so all my guns are not mounted and look at me about to spill everything all my guns are not mounted um, this right here so here's another surprise for you guys I bought a a phone mount 
uh, so that I can put it on my scope when I'm shooting. So that's coming, or I can use a camera on it. But I want to show you this. All right, so this is for my compressor. Uh, you use this to wick the moisture away so that you don't get any in your tank when you're filling it up. And this is not all of the pieces, but you get the idea. Um, I don't even remember what this is. Oh, this is for the, uh, for the flashlight. So you mount this onto your flashlight and it mounts to your stock. So when you squeeze it, the light comes on. Just a remote for the flashlight. Uh, cleaning pads. Some people say don't use them. Some people say do use them. No opinion that you have to make up your own mind. Targets. Uh, Bulldog manual. Um, but this is what I was trying to show you. Okay. So you can say that this runs from $15 a 10 to $30 a 10. Now I label mine like that. So I know exactly what I'm pulling up from the boxes, the tens. I'm not so lucky. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea. Uh, but these get really heavy if you pack them around like that. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, I shoot, even when I'm making videos for you guys, sometimes you only see one gun, but I'm usually out there shooting uh, anywhere from two to four guns. So I pack this with me and buddy, it's, it's heavy. Uh, but I just wanted you to see some of the stuff because this is not it and most guys will tell you so this is some of the stuff for the guns I'm not going to get into all of what it all does I just wanted you to see it and uh, I'm going to try and mount my scope on that and I'm just going to leave this paused in case I do get it mounted but if I don't come back and it ends right here uh, hope you guys enjoyed I know this was a lot longer and about more than you thought but I really wanted you to see what's in the box and actually how to put it together because everybody pauses and then you don't get to see certain things so I wanted you to see it and know what you were getting into it's not really bad uh, you might have to figure out some of the stuff but it's not really bad uh, and the, the gun looks and feels nice okay all right so if I don't come back I hope you enjoyed the video, and if I do, well, you get to see the finished product. All right, guys. Uh, sorry, I did come back for a moment. Um, scope rings didn't fit. Um, so everything on here would be weaver. Um, scope rail. Little adapter plates here. So, just about everything out there is Picatinny unless you really, really look. So you need to get an adapter for whatever you want to mount, or you need to get Weaver mounts. So, if you have a bunch of Picatinny and that's it, um, you need to get you some adapters. So, I need to order me some Weaver scope rings. And I need to get a Weaver bipod adapter or uh, a Weaver mount. Other than that, guys, it's been fun talking to you. The gun, again, feels good, amazing. Hope we can shoot it soon. Here in uh, Nashville, it's been raining forever. Um, just been, my, my yard is just soaking wet. If you walk on it, you sink in it. So, um, until we get a chance to shoot, and I've got a whole bunch coming up here, coming up for you when we get a chance to shoot, we're going to take the gauntlet out again. We're going to take the uh, bull balls out again with uh, new pellets. Um, 
we're going to take the uh, hats and bulldog out because I want to show you the accuracy at 30, 35 yards, 60, 65 yards, whatever. But at least 30 and 60, 35 and 60, 35, 65. I want to show you the accuracy that I see. So, until later, guys. Enjoyed it. Hope you did too. Bye.